All right, we continue to talk about the Alec Baldwin case here now and the charges of involuntary manslaughter against the actor after the tragic shooting death on the set of his movie, Russ. I've got U.S. trial attorney Lynn McCraw standing by to discuss this case. First, have a listen to this here. This is Alec Baldwin speaking to TV host George Stephanopoulos, and and you'll, you'll hear him say here that Effectively, he says that the gun went off by itself here. Listen carefully to what he says here. It wasn't in the script for the trigger to be pulled. Well, the trigger wasn't pulled. I didn't pull the trigger. So you never pulled the trigger? No, 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 no. I I would never point a gun at anyone and pull a trigger at them, never. But I have dreams about this constantly now. I wake up constantly where guns are going off. Alec Baldwin there. Alec Baldwin's actually suing the armorer on the set and the movie crew. He's suing them for giving him the gun in the first place, but he is the one who ends up being charged here with involuntary manslaughter. Let's discuss it now with my guest, Lynn McCraw. Lynn is a trial attorney. Very pleased to welcome him. Lynn, thanks a lot for coming on today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you bet, Lynn. Thank you for doing it. Are you surprised, first of all, that Alec Baldwin has been charged in this case? I'm not surprised when I looked at the uh, at, at some of the evidence that the uh, prosecutors have looked at. Uh, I'm not surprised at all that they've charged him with involuntary manslaughter. Why is that? What evidence jumped out at you? Well, several things. Uh, to begin with, he was a producer on the on the the movie film, and, and in addition to that, one of the things that was really interesting is the fact that there have been two or there were at least two prior discharges of firearms on the set before this occurred. Uh, that to me is a staggering fact. That's a fact that is, uh, that should let every, everybody know that there's, that there's a problem on that set, uh, before they were dealing with firearms. And, you know, anytime you have a discharge of a firearm, uh, that's unexpected, uh, that is going to, uh, to really, really impact everything going forward. And that's a, that's a fact I think that's going to be very, uh, difficult for uh, Mr. Baldwin's attorneys to deal with. Baldwin's lawyer has called this a, a miscarriage of justice. How do you expect this to play out? What will you be watching for as this goes through the legal system? Well, several things. To begin with, uh, the prosecutors have actually charged two different counts. Uh, one carries a, a, a much higher penalty. I suspect what's going on here is that they're giving themselves room for the lesser included, the lesser included offense of involuntary manslaughter. Even that, that one, that charge uh, carries with it a minimum sentence of one year that cannot be suspended or deferred when there's a use of a firearm involved. Uh, I suspect that that is probably what they're ultimately angling for. One of the things that I think is going to be the critical, the most critical thing about the the underlying part of this case is the prosecutor has to show that Mr. Baldwin was guilty of criminal negligence. And and in every state in the union and in the United States, that's defined a little differently. Most of them are are fairly similar. But in New Mexico, where this occurred, uh, they have to, when I say they, the prosecutor has to show foreseeability of danger to the victim, which is... uh, not going to be an issue here because anybody knows you point a gun at somebody, there's a foreseeable danger of, uh, of somebody getting hurt by the gun, right? Yeah. The second part is the, is the more, uh, the more daunting task. You have to show a substantial and unjustifiable risk of doing so. Uh, Mr. Baldwin will defend this saying that, that first of all, there's not, a, there wasn't a substantial risk because he had an armorer that was supposed to be making sure that, that there were dummy that there were only dummy rounds in and that sort of thing. Uh, he's going to have to to uh, really rely on on his on his statement that uh, that he didn't pull the trigger though because anytime you pull a trigger there's there's a there's a risk, right? Uh, so uh, he's he's really stuck in that in, the, in those in those facts. Uh, that's that's the st- the legal standard that has to be met. The substantial and unjustifiable risk is what uh, the jury is going to have yeah. to weigh, and and any time that you're dealing with a uh, with a with a celebrity, mm. uh, I, in my experience, and I haven't dealt with with several uh, cases over the years with celebrities, uh, it's like people already have an idea of of what these folks uh, who they are and and how they act. Right. So any new evidence that they get, they filter it through what they already think about the, the this particular person. So in my mind, uh, the uh, 
the biggest hurdle that the prosecutors have in this case is going to be uh, showing that that Mr. Baldwin's con conduct is something that is uh, that uh, is is so is so substantial and unjustifiable as far as the risks that it that it, that it gives to to the to the person that was injured that was killed rather that uh, that he should be criminally held criminally accountable for it. I think okay. he, he is in serious he is in serious legal jeopardy for sure. Okay, well, we are following, we'll follow it closely with it, along with everyone else, to say the least. Lynn, thank you very much for your analysis today. I appreciate it a lot. Well, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it.